Hello, everyone. I'm Greg, owner and head writer of Whiskey Culture, and we have Orion, our co-writer and our productions manager, here for another episode of the Whiskey Culture podcast, your window into the wide world of whiskey. Today, we have John Wadle from Staven Bean. They are producing high-quality single-barrel coffees. Uh, you can get over 10 different kinds of coffee from bourbon barrel-aged uh, coffee, vanilla bean barrel-aged coffee, um, even cocktail-inspired coffees, which is pretty cool. And they're all available on their website, stavenbean.com. John, how are you today? I'm doing good, Greg. Doing good. Thanks for having me on today. My pleasure. Thank you for being with us. Uh, I kind of want to launch in here. I mean, uh, I am a coffee fan. Orion, I, I know you need your coffee when we're on the road uh, doing filming. It is oh, yeah. mandatory uh, for him. Otherwise, he cannot function. Um, <laughs> every now and again, it's not I, a crippling I definitely addiction. <laughs> it's, what? It's not a crippling addiction. I mean, <laughs> maybe. Okay. I mean, every single day <laughs> we're on the road. <laughs> Um, but anyway, I mean, we haven't, we haven't seen it be a, a crippling addiction because you've, you've gotten it every day. That's true. I haven't got through my withdrawals. I haven't gotten my shakes, my jitters. <laughs> so, uh, but, but I mean, honestly, we're starting to see a lot of, uh, barrel aged products here. We're seeing like barrel aged, um, I mean, we're seeing barrel aged cigars. We're seeing all kinds of stuff We're we're even seeing like as weird as it is like bourbon cheese and stuff like i mean just it's it's Honey. crazy it, but uh why john uh barrel aged coffee well i'm a huge been a huge bourbon and whiskey lover uh plus i'm a big coffee lover and you know covid gave a lot of people a lot of downtime and you know luckily enough the distillery kept running um there at peerless and but i still had a lot of free time so i was just trying to wrap my mind around things you know I had some friends that lost their jobs and things like that during COVID. And uh, I was never put in that position, but I decided that I wanted to start a, a company, a business of, of my own. So I didn't have to ever have to worry about that. If, you know, say another pandemic or anything hits. Um, and one day it just kind of clicked. You know, I'm a single barrel curator for Kentucky Peerless. So I get to taste through mm -hmm. hundreds of barrels um, a year um, and help identify these barrels and put them into the program to sell to different accounts and things like that. But a lot of times these barrels, you know, we dump them and they never get used again, right? And they have these unique flavor profiles and aromas inside of them. Um, so I was trying to figure out how I could capture that in a different way. And uh, I was literally drinking coffee one day and I was, same thing, searching the internet, just browsing. I was like, barrel aged coffee, huh? So you next day you know I'm at work purchasing a 150 pound bag of beans. Um, and then I ran into a good buddy of mine, Corey Welsh. <laughs> Um, that I do barrel picks with through um, uh, the New Orleans Bourbon Society um, and uh, ran into him and he kind of really helped me step it up. He was bringing me beans up from New Orleans because it's a huge coffee port down there. Um, so he was able to go in there and get the beans and select the beans, make sure the quality was great. Um, and me and him, we kind of became partners um, in all of this. So we started loading up beans and barrels during COVID, uh, taking them to a Roaster and having them roasted them for us and kind of playing around with it and uh, one day we just decide like hey like let's do this uh, let's do this big there was a lot of coffee companies out there about we found about 70 different you know barrel aged coffee companies um, but not many were in the in the industry right you know it was either um, you know you had Oak and Bond uh, Cooper's Cooper's Cast um, Cooper's Cast is based out of Maine I believe and Oak and Bond is out of South Carolina. And the number one barrel aged co coffee wasn't even in Kentucky. Um, so we thought we would try to change that and bring that back to Kentucky. Well, that, I mean, that's really, really cool. Um, and it, it seems like it's just expanded. I mean, we, so we have been to Peerless a couple of times. We've actually got an episode uh, of our Rick House with Peerless coming out uh, soon. Uh, Caleb's awesome. Cordell's awesome. Um, it's really cool that you are helping them pick their single barrels because those single barrel expressions are exceptional. Uh, we have a Very limoncello unique. one here. Uh, the double barreled one was phenomenal. So that that's really cool. So, I mean, you're, you're taking that expertise that you have and you're moving it into the, the caffeine space, if you will. Yeah. I mean, um, most people that drink whiskey drink coffee. I mean, it's just one of those things that, you know, kind of go hand in hand. 
Orion. Again. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. So, uh, what, I mean, so obviously Peerless was a natural fit for you since you're already there and already working with them. Um, but looking on your website, I mean, you guys have, I mean, just some of the stuff that you sent me, um, I mean, all kinds of different stuff, cocktail inspired coffees. Um, I mean, like a sidecar, Mai Tai, you have rum barrel aged, uh, vanilla barrel. aged. I mean, what, uh, what made you want to create all of these, these unique expressions? I mean, what you, you started, uh, you started with peerless, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I started with peerless, you know, and first off, peerless is great. You know, Corky, Carson, Caleb, you know, when I brought this idea to them and told them what I wanted to do, you know, rather than like, the only thing that came out of Corky's mouth was how can I help you? Like, what do you need from me? Like, I'll let you do whatever you need from me. So, you know, they let me use all the peerless and rye barrels that I want. Plus rick housing, you know, after I put the beans in the barrel, I put them up in the rick house to actually age with oh, whiskey cool. and bourbon. Um, but we wanted to show people that we, we weren't messing around. Uh, you know, this wasn't just going to be a bourbon and rye. I mean, dealing with other cooperages and things like that, you know, I was able to come across some really unique barrels. Like the, it was an ex bourbon pure vanilla extract barrel aged. We had a Simmon whiskey vanilla extract barrel we came across, um, an orange curacao that was actually a Grand Marier barrel. Uh, shout out wow. to Rolling Fork. You know, they gave me uh, some pretty unique rum barrels that I got some beans going into. Um, and we just wanted to show people that, you know, it's more than just the bourbon and rye. Like, we will barrel age any unique thing. We got a lot of, a lot of other barrels getting ready to come out that are different. And the cocktail series, you know, that was, we always laugh. Uh, that was us sitting around drinking some whiskey and a good friend of ours, Jessica Ann was all like, uh, why don't y'all do a cocktail series? And we're like, what? She's like, well, you're aging the orange curacao and you're aging the bourbon. Why not blend those together and call it, you know, a sidecar. So then that really got the wheels turning. We're like, all right, well, why don't we take the, the rye and the Amaro and blend it and call it a, a Manhattan? Uh, let's yeah. take the rum and the orange curacao and call it, you know, a rye tie. Uh, so we just kind of going from there and we got some other cocktail series coming out here soon, some other unique barrels. So we're just trying to find, you know, the barrels that aren't very common, you know, most barrel aged coffee companies, they do a bourbon, a rye, and sometimes yeah. not even a rye, just like a bourbon and rum. Um, and we wanted to do more than that. We wanted to have more options and uh, just let people see the uniqueness of barrel aging coffee too. I think that's cool because like you kind of reflect the uniqueness of the single barrels in you know, just everyday bourbon, rice and stuff like that. And you bring it to a different market. And I think that's really cool. Thank you. Thank And shout out to, you know, Quills Coffee. They do, um, you know, Brian, Cameron and Nathan over there. They uh, help do all our roasting and help develop our roast profiles. Um, so big shout out to them, you know, for helping out with this too as well. Uh, we, you know, we couldn't have done half of this without them and their expertise um, and letting us, you know, kind of ride their coattail a little bit and, uh, kind of train us on cupping coffee. Like if, if you've ever been to a whiskey tasting, uh, cupping coffee, doing a coffee tasting is, will blow your mind, uh, <laughs> smelling and tasting all these different coffee beans and things like that. And uh, I think it's actually helped develop my palate a little bit better too. Sounds like we'll have to do that next time we're up. Please yeah, come awesome. on. We'll have a whole layout of coffee to uh, do some cupping sessions with. So how long have you been producing coffee? How long has Stephen Bean been around? We launched back in September, September 1st um, is when we kind of launched everything. So we've only been up for about, you know, two and a half months. Um, things have been going good. You know, uh, Haley Hoback um, over at Moxie Made, she helped develop our website and everything. Mm-hmm. She has a company for that stuff. So she used to work at Peerless. Um, and it's Haley Cruff now. I forgot she got married. She's going to kill me <laughs> on that one. Uh, but, you know, she was great. She helped develop um our website and everything for us too to help us launch. And we literally came with her within like 30 days. It was like, Hey, uh, we had a problem with our last website. Like, could you do this for us? I mean, and she had it all done in 30 days. So big shout out to her for making that possible for the launch to happen. That's awesome. I mean, listen, we, we maintain our own website here. We don't have a, a third party person. So I know how difficult that can be and how easy websites are to break. When when oh, yeah. when you get that internal server error and you're just like roll it back roll it back, <laughs> yeah. it was uh it definitely sets back a month because we were actually set to launch in August, 
Um, and because of the whole website thing, that didn't happen. So then we're scrambling. And uh, what's funny is I saw her like two months prior at a wedding, and she was telling me what she was doing. I was like, why didn't I get you to do this? Um, and then circle back around, we end up using her anyway. So I like to think that was just faith, you know. Um, she was probably asking herself the same thing. She's like, well, uh, yeah. I don't know, why didn't you use me? <laughs> that was my uh, – Man, in in my previous life, when I was uh, when I when I had my previous company, and people would be like, oh, "Man, I had all these problems. I, I don't know why I didn't use you in the first place." I'm like, "You and me both." But uh, yeah, I mean, so so it's cool. So you guys are just over uh, a year, right? Yes. Uh, no, just like two months. You know, oh, it took us oh, about like a whole year this to work. This September. Everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. This I September, mean, the, we just launched. The buzz that you all are generating online is crazy for two months. I thought you guys would have been around for a few years. Having what is it, thirteen different expressions uh, of coffee? And that was the first launch. Yeah, I mean that's that's crazy. I that's you guys definitely for a first. yeah, that's a massive launch, and you all yeah. present yourselves like you've been around for years. I mean, when, when you said, uh, when you said September, I was thinking September, you know, 2020 a year ago. And I was like, Oh, well, you know, that's a lot of growth in a year, but two months, I mean, you guys came out swinging and, uh, you've got a lot of influencers talking about you and, and all kinds of, I mean, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Like I said, we went to show coming out of the gate that, you know, it just wasn't a run of the mill barrel aged coffee. And the great thing is, you know, it's just two people. It's myself and Corey. Um, and he lives in new Orleans. He's the coffee beans guy. You know, he takes care of getting all the beans for us, ships them up here. And then I load, do everything unload. So it's all, you know, hands on step of the way. I mean, it's not just, um, a big manufacturing that we have, you know, for 13 products, it's two guys, um, taking care of everything. And, and plus quills too, as well for roasting and packaging for us. But yeah, I mean, it's a, we, we take great pride in our coffee and to make sure that the taste is nothing but peerless. <laughs> I like that. That's awesome. I mean, so I, I actually do have a cup of your, your peerless coffee here that I'm, I'm enjoying. I, I ground it and brewed it right, right before the podcast. Same here. Same here. I, uh, that's how I start every day. So I'm kind of with Orion on that one. You know, maybe I'm a little bit at it because <laughs> I didn't get my cup of coffee this morning. About halfway through my car ride, I'm getting that headache. I'm like, oh, I need caffeine. I need caffeine. I, I, I mean, it's a uh, it's a dang good cup of coffee, man. And I uh, I drink my coffee black like a complete weirdo. Um, Orion drinks his his coffee like it's candy. Mm-hmm. um <laughs> it's my one it's my like, one sugar thing i gotta just yeah yeah he, he he's crazy man he he counts his macronutrients he knows like what he's eating at all times but then we'll we'll uh show up in the morning and he's like all right how much sugar can you fit into that cup <laughs> while it also still <laughs> contains caffeine I, I found out i cut out the sugar by using a little bit of creamer in there yeah like a little bit of like sweet cream in there but the coffee holds up well in like lattes and creamers and everything like that too. You still get a lot of that flavor that comes through depending on how much cream you add, I guess. But, you know, Quills work with us on that, you know, adding cream and things like that to make sure the flavor and everything was still, still there. That's good. You know, and that's something I never thought about because, you know, drinking coffee black, you know, I, I just, I, I brew a pot of coffee, I'll pour some in a cup and I, and I go. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm usually judging all my coffee is just, off of that, you know, off of how it is right out of the pot. But, um, I guess there's a lot of R and D that goes into that as well to make sure that bourbon yeah. barrel flavor carries through even with some flavors. Right. Cause I mean, if you have bourbon barrel coffee and, and I guess, you know, the, the vast majority of coffee drinkers put cream sugar into their coffee I suppose there's a lot of R and D that has to go into developing that, uh, so that the flavors and the, and the bourbon flavor is still able to be tasted past the, the creamer or milk and sugar or, or anything like that. I mean, did you guys really have to, to hone that in and say like, all right, exactly how long do we have to age and turn these barrels to make sure there's enough flavor that it's not overpowering, but that it can stand up to somebody putting, Starbucks caramel macchiato cream in their in their coffee. When we uh when we first started out, Brian uh, Berkey or uh, Abandoned Coffee on social media or Abandoned Whiskey, if you know him, 
he said it perfectly. When we started out and we went to them to kind of get their opinion, he said, you know, you don't want to under barrel age it or you don't want to make it too extringent in the bourbon. He's like, if you can find that right in between middle, and he did like that chef kiss, he's like, you'll be golden. So with that being said, each barrel is very different. You know, we don't have a necessarily set time for every barrel aged mm-hmm. coffee. We pull, I get the barrels fresh. So like, I mean, I take them right off the dumping line. Maybe let them sit for a day, put the beans right in there. Same thing for all the special barrels that we get. I mean, um, once again, I'm able to go over and pick them up from other cooperages, you know, um, the day they arrive and things like that. So each barrel we treat differently. You know, we first we pull out samples after a couple weeks, let them roast it. You know, we go over there, get with them, do a little roasting, figure it out. And uh, kind of go from there. Do we want more flavor in there or was this too extringent? Or, and um, so each barrel is different from each other. So everyone's, uh, like I said, a hands-on process and kind of a judgment call as they're aging. So are you, um, so it, it's interesting that you say that you pull it right off the line, maybe let it sit for a day. Because I, I know uh, when you're aging things like cigars and, and, and things like that, you really have to make sure the inside of the barrels more or less dry so that you know it it almost like sweats the inside of the barrel when it gets hot but there there's there can't be any freestanding liquid so you guys allow that liquid to kind of permeate the bean and and really make it something that is that is truly a whiskey coffee i i i like that and i like that you're able to do that because you know it's not just the essence of the whiskey at that point i mean you really are drinking a whiskey coffee yeah, I mean, there's no alcohol yeah. added. You know, the good thing about um, with that, too, is it's such a high alcohol content. It won't allow the beans to ferment inside mm-hmm. the barrel, too. So, uh, and not only that, but, I mean, I take them down every other day and rotate them. You know, make sure that I'm rotating the beans inside of there uh, so that gets every bit of that surface area covers the beans, too, as well. So, we agitate the barrels and everything, too, uh, just to make so- sure. One question I want to ask, I mean, you, you're a couple months in now, you're getting press, you've got people talking about you, you're sending out samples, you're doing stuff like like podcasts with knuckleheads like us. And uh, I mean, I mean, what is the biggest challenge post launch that you've you've dealt with? And how how are you overcoming that? Um. I wouldn't say, I would say the biggest ta- or, you know, obstacle would probably just be um, meeting everyone's demands, right? So, you know, we always like, hey, what do you all want? What do you want to see more of? And you have people that like dark roast. You have people that like medium roast. You want, people want K-cups. <laughs> people want it in ground rather than beans. So, you know, that, to me, that's the hardest thing right now is trying to figure out right, how do we appeal to everyone? Um, do we do K cups? Do we do it ground? Because you know, a lot of your true coffee people, they like the whole yeah. beans. I, I did like um, that. It, it, there's and, a different you know, flavor so. when you grind the beans fresh versus it sitting powdered. <laughs> and and I'm like, I'm not a huge, like I said, I, I don't drink coffee every day. I, I like good cups of coffee. It's got to be a good cup of coffee for me because I'm not masking it with anything, any cream or sugar. But um, I. I yeah, I mean, I, I guess I've found that if you're grinding the bean, there's like more of a an earthy uh, body to it uh, rather than just the straight coffee flavor. It's almost it's it's a little bit more roasted. It's a little bit more multi-dimensional rather than just that flavor of that single cup. And that that was that the intention of keeping the bean whole. Yeah, yeah, we want it to be fresh as possible, and we want people to really enjoy, you know, getting that bag out, grinding your beans, being able to smell it. Um, you know, if you can smell fresh ground coffee yeah. beans, I yeah. mean, it's amazing compared to when you buy it, like, store-bought, already, already ground. And like you said, even the flavor yeah. is different um, compared to grinding it to doing it right on the spot. But I will say, you know, we got two big coffee lovers down at the distillery that, you know, they were Folgers guys. They buy the grounds, and once I showed them, like, I brought my whole setup into work, ground the beans they went out by grinders <laughs> everything uh french presses and they're like yeah i gotta have this and one of the guys is pretty stubborn man like he's one of those old heads like i'm setting my ways i'm not changing anything and lo and behold he came in the next day and was like bought me a grinder everything there show me go. show me how to do this um so yeah yeah i mean that's that's cool to be able to you know convert people over to but i mean i mean 
that's the thing is is there's a balance between what what are you making available that everybody wants and and what's your vision and um i like that you kept the whole beans because it was interesting when i opened it up um i had to bring down my coffee grinder which i haven't brought down in a year and a half and and ground the beans but there's there's almost something therapeutic about making a cup of coffee grinding the beans taking that putting that in you know smelling the aroma of the coffee and the fresh ground beans before you even put it in and and it's interesting because you know i i think one of the things that's interesting is whiskey uh enthusiasts are methodical we find things that we enjoy oh, yeah. we find specific ways to make cocktails and it's funny because we can sit there and we can make our own demerara sugar simple syrup and put it into a jar that the way that we like it. And you know, you'll you'll find us uh, going out of our way to find the specific ingredients and the specific bitters we like. And we'll sit there and we'll take ten minutes to yeah, you know, well, not really ten minutes, but like five minutes to to make our own little craft cocktail and uh just grinding your own beans probably adds an extra 60 to 90 seconds to the entire coffee process but changes it entirely do you find that whiskey enthusiasts understand that that process and that need for that methodical absolutely. approach absolutely because I mean, i've had a lot of people that reach out and purchase it that i know personally in the industry and they're like oh i already have a grinder i have a chemex <laughs> everything like i don't mess around when it comes to my coffee and uh, I know you're calling like a uh, same battle around being an addict. I did feel like an addict um, at one point when I was throwing out, like I threw out like all my cure eggs, everything, you know, um, about a year ago. And at one point I'm sitting there weighing coffee beans on a scale, getting the right <laughs> oh amount on there, grinding it up. And I just stopped. Yeah. I was like, what am I doing? Like, oh my God. Like I used to be just scoop it in there, shut it, turn my coffee That's on and great. go. And now I'm like weighing out the exact grams into there and figuring out ratios and, uh, I'm like Jesus. I gotta. I gotta tone I mean, it down. I, listen, but I love. I, it. I don't I blame do. you, man. Like, I've got a little book where I I fine tune my recipes for the cocktails that I like down to three. You know, I'll, I'll be like five drops of water. You know, two two drops of or two dashes of Angostura bitters and and two drops of sweet orange oil. And it's like, I mean, you you get into that if it's something you like and you know what you like and you're going for it. Why? Why the heck not? You know, I mean, if you're measuring out your beans and you know that you're going to get a perfect cup of coffee every time from from this and you enjoy it just as much as you enjoy Can't making that craft it. cocktail or something like it's the little things in life, like having that perfect, consistent cup of coffee to start your morning. I mean, we live in such a chaotic world today not to get. A little bit off off track here. Orion's laughing. He knows where I'm going. <laughs> All I have is this coffee. This All is the only thing keeping coffee. me sane. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I mean, for real, like, think about it. We we have all this all this stuff. I mean, you're building a business. We're building a business here. Um, we're you know we're both trying to get traction in an industry that's saturated right now, and and uh, there's a lot of stress that comes with what we do. But it, it's just appreciating little things. If you know, I mean focusing on on measuring the beans and grinding them and putting them together it's it's like for me when i'm tasting a glass of whiskey it's i'm able to be present in that moment you know when i'm tasting a whiskey and all i'm focused on is that moment and the flavors and everything else in the world kind of fades away and you're just able to exist in this single moment and focus on this one thing i get the same way when i'm cooking you know you you can't you're not browsing social media you're not um you know you're not getting you're not checking text messages you're not doing anything else you're just existing in that moment on that one thing and it's this like this pure focus moment that we just really don't always get i get it man because you know during COVID, cooking is really what um you know because you couldn't go out anywhere you couldn't do anything man i would spend hours cooking at home like you know just trying all different types of recipes and it was very therapeutic between that and the coffee like working on the coffee and coming home and cooking meals and things like that 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 passed a lot of time and yeah. kept you kept me a little bit sane um after i was popping <laughs> open all these whiskey bottles <laughs> during covid at home kind of de depleted my uh yeah and I, my collection man, there. i've, I've got to say so enjoying this uh this cup of coffee right now i can really taste 
the whiskey. And it, and it's interesting because, you know, we have, uh, you know, we've, we've tried Orion. How many times have we tried peerless? We've tried it out of a barrel. We've tried different single dozen, barrels. We've tried, you know, all kinds. I mean, we're big fans. We love peerless, uh, whiskey, but when I'm trying this, it's not gimmicky. I mean, I, I, I love whiskey. I love the taste of whiskey. I love the taste of quality whiskey. Um, you know, and it, and it's one of those things that if you appreciate that and you appreciate the flavors of whiskey, I mean, this really elevates the coffee and it's not just kind of like, Oh, I can taste some whiskey with it. It's like, if you side by side this with peerless, you're going to draw notes between the two. Like it really carries over and, and it makes it through the roasting process. And I, I didn't add any cream or sugar or anything again, but like just drinking this, you can, you can really taste that the peerless notes, the key peerless notes. I mean, it's, it's a really well done cup and you know, I, I I'm not a serious coffee guy, but I'm a serious whiskey guy. I mean, enough to build my entire livelihood and career around it. And I, I really appreciate this and you're kind of, it's weird, but you're making me want to be a coffee guy. <laughs> and I guess that's, that's kind of the, the thing is He's the converter, <laughs> we've heard. Yeah, spreading the gospel of coffee and like converting people into this, this brave new frontier of, of single barrel coffee. It's, it's, it's funny, man. You know, when I started doing some of these events, me and my partner, Corey, um, we show up to these like coffee slash whiskey events and people direct me like, peerless are, are you all here i'm like no this is my coffee and they're like what like because i had peerless on the bags and everything and that was the funniest part about it was people seeing me on the coffee side of things that are used to seeing me on the whiskey side um but i do both i still work at peerless full time like i said this coffee is just something that we're kind of doing right now um just to have some fun man we want to have some fun we want to create good quality coffee and i will say shout out to caleb kilburn our master distiller you know you were saying how when you taste peerless and coffee you get the same notes I'm very lucky enough that, you know, a lot of those great single barrels we release in the gift shop, um, he'll, oh, he'll really? uh, oh, yeah. give me those barrels. So, you know, I, I'm using, yeah, yeah, like uh, I'm using some top of the mill barrels. Like the raw barrel I use, that was a double oak raw barrel that I used for the, the Honduran beans. Um, and the bourbon one um, with one of our single so we, barrels we have, down uh, here at the We gift have a shop. bottle of the limoncello uh, single barrel right now, which is so good. It's so good. <laughs> oh. I tell you what, we got some new ones down there. Um, we have one called Rye Tie that is funky. I mean, it's the funkiest rye you will ever taste. I mean, it's it's amazing that it's even a rye whiskey that we have out there. Uh, we have another one called um, uh, Partridge in a Pear Tree. Um, so it's a uh, it's a uh, bourbon that we have. We have the Chocolate Manhattan. We have another Double Oak Rye single barrel. Uh, we only, they only last about two weeks at the distillery right now. So, I mean, we are turning through them like crazy down there. That's insane. Well, awesome. I mean, if there's, if there's one thing that you can share with all of the whiskey enthusiasts listening to this, who may or may not think that we're absolutely insane here talking about coffee for a half hour and, uh, well, as soon as they try it, they're going to understand. Yeah, that is true. As soon as they try it, they will understand it. It is a coffee for whiskey enthusiasts. Um, I mean, it's, it's just a, it's a dang good cup of coffee. I mean, in general, and and it's funny cause it's, uh, I mean, I've had cups of coffee from, you know, I've been in Costa Rica and, and, uh, Jamaica and like all these different places. And I'm like, cool, it's coffee, it's coffee, it's coffee, but this is a coffee that's up my alley. It's a coffee for whiskey lovers and whiskey enthusiasts. If you had one thing to tell our community about your coffee, why? this is a coffee for whiskey enthusiasts. What would you want to tell them? I would say, you know, um, if you know anything about me or my partner, Corey, in this, you know, we're both whiskey lovers. We're huge whiskey fans. You know, I work for a distillery that I like to say is our first mission is quality over quantity. You know, we don't want to put out the most. We just want to put out the best. And um, I love the program that I've been running now for about five years there. And I want to take that into the coffee. So, you know, this isn't just something we – do on, you know, the side just for, you know, for pure pleasure. I mean, we do enjoy it. We have fun, but we really do put a lot into this. You know, we, we cup everything. Um, we taste everything throughout the process. This isn't just something we're trying to do to get rich quick or something like that. Um, 
I have my name behind it. Corey has his name behind it. So we're not going to put anything out there that we don't even back or believe in too as well. And if you're, if you're anybody out there is doubtful, uh, come to, if you ever make it to Louisville, Kentucky, let me know. I will bring out a whole cupping session. We can cup all the coffee you want. I'll take you, show you our barrel, show you our whole process down there to let you see that it is hands-on from start to finish. You know, I like to say I work for a craft distillery, and this is amazing craft coffee that we do too as well. Well, we're, we're out there pretty often. We've got a sponsor in Louisville, so uh, so we're out there pretty often. So we'll take you up on that. Maybe we'll do a live stream or something. That'd be awesome. But, yeah, guys, if you are um, – I mean, if you're – looking for your next bag of coffee, uh, skip the Folgers, skip the Maxwell house, uh, go to stavenbean.com shop for a couple of them. You guys have a sample pack, right? You, they can buy like three coffees and in, in one go do get one free. Yeah. And we'll be at, if anybody's going to be in, um, Kentucky in December, uh, my bourbon group, Kobe that I'm in, we're doing a big event called bourbon and benevolence. I'll have a whole thing there where you can come in, I mean, I have an espresso machine, everything. I'll be making all types of different coffees and things like that there too. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on with us. We really appreciate it. I mean, it, it is a good cup of coffee. I, when I, you know, I waited to try it because um, I kind of wanted to go in flying blind. I, I made a my first cup of it uh, for this podcast and I am uh, blown away. I, I didn't realize that you could just pack that much whiskey flavor into coffee because coffee is a strong flavor on its own and uh for that barrel note to carry through and and it's just a it's a darn good cup it is definitely i can see it becoming the the go-to coffee for whiskey enthusiasts it's it's uh dang good but um thank you again for being on and uh Thank you, everyone, for joining us here at the Whiskey Culture Podcast, where we talk about all things whiskey. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter. You can sign up for free at whiskeyculture.com and also sign up for our Barrel Club for early access to our content and our barrel picks. Um, John, how can people follow you all online? Yeah, so we do have a website and an Instagram. It's just stavenbean.com, or you can follow us at Instagram at stavenbean, or even give me a follow, sir underscore jwadel. Um, on Instagram as well. We do daily posts, uh, try to keep everyone updated on what we got going on and what we got new coming out. So just keep in mind, if you already follow us, we'll have about three or four different new barrels coming out here in a little bit over a month. Um, we're just finishing up some labels on them. And uh, if you any bourbon groups out there that are big coffee lovers, I specialize in taking your barrels after the barrel picks. Um, so I got a couple of groups I've done barrel picks with that I take their barrels after they're done with the pick, put their own amount of coffee in there and let them have their own coffee for their bourbon groups. Awesome. And everyone, please uh, don't forget to follow Staven Bean and Whiskey Culture on all major social medias. Whiskey Culture, we're on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast so you do not miss an episode of the Whiskey Culture podcast where we talk about everything whiskey. Thank you all so much and join us next time. Cheers. Cheers.